You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 232. And today, let's talk about the power of the win-win effect in your network. You ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson. Authority Amplifier for Expertpreneurs. And today I've got a guest joining me who has, let's just say he's experienced exponential growth. And it's all based on the principle of what he calls the winject effect, which is really the win-win effect and how he's applied it into his network to get rapid exponential growth in his business. He's got a really inspire, inspiring and very powerful story. So fasten your seatbelts and get ready for this one. Now, before we jump in, one of the things that Chris has mastered, and he's going to be alluding to this and sharing some of his strategies, like how he positions his authority. You know, he's he, he has a background in sales, but then he recognized that sales was really all about influence, collaboration, connection. And all of that is a hundred times more possible when you've really established your positioning as authority in the market. And in order to do that, there are eight factors you're going to want to have in place. And these eight factors are, are essential to ramp up your revenue, your impact, and your influence in your market. So if you head over to authorityamplifiers.com, you can download my free guide on the eight steps to being a highly paid authority in your market. Again, that's authorityamplifiers.com. All right, let's drop right into my conversation with Chris. Welcome back, Amplifiers. It's your host, Melanie Benson here, and I've got a really fun guest today. We're talking about the power of a network, the Winject philosophy that our friend Chris Ross has created. Let me introduce you to Chris. Chris is one of the world's leading experts on high-performance sales teams and is the creator of the sales industry's first privately owned nationally accredited program under the TCR Consulting Agency. Now, Chris specializes in training international business executives on what he calls his win-win effect, which we are going to dig into today, which leads to a radical transformation in business development processes and benefits both sides of the buyer and the seller relationship. And this is something that really like it endeared me to Chris immediately. He uses something called his one heartbeat, one mission, one outcome philosophy, and uses this framework to drive goals and produce transformation for marginally performing sales teams. So if that doesn't get you curious, this will. In February of 2020, Chris assumed the board's chairman's role, which freed him up to focus on his newest venture, Winject Inc. and Winject Studios. Now, he's always been fascinated with broadcasting and media. So Chris quickly turned his network corporation into a podcasting powerhouse. Winject is the home of his top-ranked podcast show, The Win-Win Effect and Winject Radio, with more than 2 million downloads in the first year on the shows. Chris hosts, he has begun adding other shows to the network to help grow their listenership to Chris I love this so much. I'm so excited to talk to you about Winject today and what you're seeing happen when we tap into the power of a network. Absolutely. And I appreciate you inviting me on. I know you came on to the Women of Fat and I'll be coming out here soon. And anytime I have an opportunity to speak to Melanie Benson, the coach with the mostest, I'm, I'm all about it. So we're good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, you know, it's, um, it's such an interesting journey that you've been on. And uh, I was fascinated when you shared a little bit about how you went from the training background that you had in sailing and working with so many high profile companies to podcasting, just maybe quickly tell us how that unfolded for you, because it's really interesting how you ended up where you ended up. Right. Yeah. Um, That's a really fun question to answer. And I don't get to ask that often. It's like, how the hell did you end up here? Um, That's a, a lot of things. I think a lot of moving parts 
tended to happen or a lot of things that I was doing on the back end. Um, you mentioned in the in a brief introduction about me stepping into the chairman's role and, and me hiring and you know putting people in place and you know the branding and obviously with the trade schools. Well, me structuring those two deals and very lucrative, which it was scary but good. Um, that was like my kind of like goodbye to the sales industry, but not like goodbye forever because everyone's in sales. We all know this. Um, but when I put myself in a position, I've been asked for years, man, like you should do a podcast, you should do a podcast. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. And now I have the time to kind of focus on it. And I'm glad that I did. Um, my business development team sat down and was like, listen, you know, this might be a way for you to train the trade schools that you're selling these two programs for, for them to rebrand and, and sell themselves enrolling students, a way of indirectly training them on how to enroll students morally and ethically into that program. When that happened, I structured within the deals, and that's how I was able to get so many downloads within the first year of the show, was that, okay, you guys got to listen to the show. I'll train you indirectly in the first couple of seasons on how to really properly enroll students and focusing on the end outcome for them. It's going to be the best interest of them. Um, and it really worked out. And that kind of took off. And then when I stepped away, that was like me stepping away from like my first child, I, I believe. Um, it was, it was difficult because, you know, obviously we're entrepreneurs, right? So the amount of control, when you let that go, it's like, okay, yeah, great. I sold it for X amount of dollars and a really amount of good money, but what do I do now? So I saw a huge gap in the marketplace, in the delivery of podcasting media. I was like, well, how do I, how can I give more? Cause I've already received so much from so many, many listeners that tune in each and every week, like loyal fans. I, I was just like, man, I'm going to, how do I, how can I continue to keep like taking myself to the next level? I was like, all right, well, sort of reaching out to people like Justin Shank, Adam Shibley, which we all know, um, Brian Bogart. I was like, how can we build a community leaning into that and then teaching podcasters how to really take themselves to the next level? Um, not just as in podcasting game, but if they have their own products, services, and goods, that's my expertise and building out the systems and infrastructure on the back end of that for them to really excel on the right ways mm -hmm. of doing things. So this is really, you know, where your passion starts to interlace, if you will, with mm -hmm. a a way to like build the power of network. Like you're building network, a network of listeners by, you know, kind of making it a part of the training. And I think that's that's actually a really brilliant strategy. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of like one of those things where you you put in the work and you kind of like take a step back and go, okay, this this can be impactful, but how can I communicate this properly to really for them to feel the intention behind why I'm doing this? Um, I've been, you know, of course, I made my bones in entrepreneurship and you know, enrolling students into international programs and started doing it with teams and made a good amount of revenue, and which I definitely did help with me having, well, having control when I structure deals because that's all leverage, right? So, but when I took a step back and I started thinking about it in a bigger picture, how I realized that networks were doing it wrong, Melanie. They're there to shine a light on the show just for that show to, for them to make proceeds and obviously income from with, you know, sponsorship and, and leverage pieces. They, they looked at them as, in my opinion, pawns in the game. It's like, okay, well, how can I build a community and for them to monetize, but then also monetize where they have mailbox money? I'm from the South. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. So we see mailbox money. So how can I structure that for them to just keep getting that residual income coming in without them doing anything other than just being a part of the community and doing what they do great on, you know? So, and that was, that was the main side of it. And then it kind of blew up like the first 50 shows. We got call them. We call them founders because they're laying down a solid foundation. Then we opened up the waiting list. Everyone's kind of like we've been whispering out. This is now that I'm going on, I guess a, a pod tour. I guess you would call it me promoting it. But mm -hmm. it's been opened up to 300 to 500 shows. We're projecting in the next probably six months of coming on board the community, which the community focus on a collaboration, then collective impact, and then that's where the network comes in. Yeah, so let's let's unpack Winject a little bit and sure. what that network means, because you know we we get it because we've talked about it. But mm -hmm. as someone's listening in, help paint a picture for what it is you're creating, what your vision is there. 
what my vision is a great question. And yes, we get it. And it's not what we say, it's what they hear, right? And take in. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like, so say, for instance, you know, remember back in the day <laughs> when you started your first podcasting show, like, you know, seven, eight, it was about seven, eight years. Uh, yeah, my first podcast was eight years ago, maybe yeah, almost yeah. nine now. <laughs> yeah, good, good memory. I don't know. It's come from <laughs> obviously our other conversations. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yes, um, if you're thinking about from that long ago, okay, how can I, if I had a team or if I had someone that's been there before and they were able to not just shine a light on me and get me more exposure for them, for the right people to listen to the podcast, how can I get out my message in a way where I can focus on me being the talent? So you think about like um, iHeartRadio, I know does this, Bloomberg obviously does this because there's certain deals that we have later on in our process, which I'll reveal later. I mean, that's a whole other, another story about structuring, but if they're able to focus on them being a talent and really speaking to their listeners for the intention behind why they're a podcaster, that will give them, I guess you would say the freedom and that feeling where they're able to give more and not being so um, stretched for time. Cause you know, it's like, uh, I saw a post the other day on someone's post. They were like um, things podcasters say. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of died laughing. Oh, let me tell you about my guests. Like, where can we find you? And this, and what were your five favorite books? Well, <laughs> that's not really going to reach the right audience. We know this, right? So and that's one of the reasons why people tune in for my show, because they're getting like uncut, raw, in your face you know, messaging and, and, and value that we're not trying to sell anything on the back end other than providing a open door for them to walk through themselves. And I think that's one of the things that obviously you've done with your giveaways that I love, because if you're selling something, you need to sell the next encounter. And that's what a lot of these guys aren't doing. And that's what I really want to help them with. You would be mind blown. How, and maybe you do know this, but how many podcasters I talk to who come to me and say, Melanie, I'm not making any money with my podcast. I was just on clubhouse last night, having a conversation about this very thing. Someone was like, I have been podcasting since 2019. I haven't got a dime out of my podcast. And all of the podcasters who were on the panel went like, <laughs> like, right. okay, like we got to fix that. And the number one thing we always tell people is have some kind of a next step. You have to inspire people to go deeper with you, even if you're the host of the show. It's Absolutely. not always about the guests. Like, yes, we want the guests to to be have a light sh- shine on them. And I love shining the light on you today. And this is our podcast. It's part of our, it's kind of our authority uh, presence. So mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think about how people are, you know, maybe missing the boat on a way to connect the dots between their podcast and creating more business for themselves? Good question. They're focusing on the wrong things. When you try to make money, you, it's very difficult to make money. But when you're focusing on how can I make more collective impact and creating an environment and creating the experience for your customers or for your listeners, then that will come, right? So I always, my advice to someone that hasn't made any money or monetizing from their show, are you trying to? Like You got to make it a no brainer for your listeners. Why should they want to learn more from you? what gives you the right to try to sell them on a, on a higher end program, product, service, and good. I mean, what's your credibility other than just you hitting record on a microphone? Are you plugged into the right people or the right people that you're trying to get to? This goes back to the methodology behind the win-win effect. You put people in a position where they know for sure they're getting a a tremendous amount of value for nothing other than return, other than their time and effort. So that's a hard question for someone that's trying to build a program or product service and good and goes, Oh, I haven't made any money from this. That's because you're focusing on the wrong things. Focus on how you can create more of experience for them and ask them what they are looking for. If Melanie, if I was, if I was looking to, you know, maybe potentially provide a service for you guys, what would that kind of look like for you? What do you need from me? Talk to your listeners, help them. We'll provide them the questions for for them to give you the feedback and then you build it from there. Yeah, that's well said. And and I always think of the, um, it's like once you get your podcast to a certain point, it's like we're really creating our own culture in a way. Yes. And that's a culture that like you just, I loved what you were just saying about like, what is the value that you're delivering for absolutely zero dollars? And is that 
inspiring and creating energy or is it flat and feeling disconnected? And so Ooh, that's what I was hearing that. out of that. Mm -hmm. So flat, and that's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about that the way that I'm very conscious of how I'm transferring energy and we transmit energy and we transmit communication non-verbally and any just sitting by sitting there. So if you're on a microphone and if you're on a podcast show, I'm very conscious of how I'm transferring energy into, not just into this conversation with you, but I'm conscious of how it's going to be perceived by the listeners and who's tuning into the show. Before I jumped on your show this early in this past week, you know, I can soon myself with a lot of your content. I know, kind of understand what your audience is receiving from you on a, on a regular basis. And obviously I love what your show is all about. It's, you know, it's amplifying a message and getting them to profit, right? So when a lot of people don't understand what profit means in business, because what is profit? Like, is it passive income? Like, yeah, of course, but you ask yourself some really difficult questions. So if you kind of know what you're trying to do overall, then you can be more conscious of that energy that you're transferring from the energy that I'm transferring into you, Melanie, and from your listeners, the, in, the feedback that we get or the way that you're having a conversation, if, you're, if anybody can know this by just using your emotional intelligence, knowing someone's really digging what you're talking about, right? Now right. that I see that instant return, now it's plugged, now it's transferring right back into me to give more. So me giving more and providing such a higher level of experience I'm plugged into my energy source. So when I get off of calls, Melanie, I have a hard time. Well, this is what I suffered from years before until I kind of figured it all out. <laughs> is <laughs> how can I recycle that back into what I do for a living and in all aspects of my life? Mm. Yeah. You know, you're in such a unique journey right now, taking everything that you've accomplished in the sales and training, you know, part of your background and now moving into podcasting and building uh, the Winject Network. I mean, it's really fascinating to see this unfold for you. I'm curious, like, you know, part of your work before was teaching people how to reach this competitive advantage, how to mm -hmm. tap the win-win effect, how to get to the top 1%. Do you see ways that you can translate those um, kind of previous reiterations of your work into what you're doing now for podcasters and the network side of it? Sure. Um, that's a phenomenal question, by the way. Um, I think the best way of going about doing that, I like to try to get someone in a position where I'm starting to identify their behavioral patterns. And that comes from my, me using framework and in, in, in a way of, I go about asking the right questions to penetrate through the levels, right? Of those layers and boundaries or whatever they're putting up. Smoke screens, right? So when I start asking all these questions, they're going to communicate to me in the best way if they communicate, but I'm going to not just pay attention to what they're telling me. I want to pay attention to what they're not telling me. And I'm going to start asking some questions where I'm able to, I guess you would say re-anchor some certain emotions for them to plug into what they should be telling me for them to tell me themselves go, Hey, I came to this idea, Melanie, <laughs> you know, this is what I feel. And I'm like, well, you think you just came to that, but I allowed you to get there. You see, I'm see my point. Yeah, that's so, the coaching journey is you're exactly. literally asking questions that coach out of them something mm -hmm. you know is there that they're not accessing yet. Right. And that's the best only way, the only the only people that are able to do that at a very high level, in my opinion, are empaths. They're able to put themselves all the way into that person's situation and so they can feel the world. And you have to take your ego all the way out of that. Because I mean, I've I've been around a lot of, I guess you would say in parentheses, coaches but they're not really coaches. They're, they're, they're in that role to sell them a product, service, and good in the programs, right? So, but the ones that actually own the businesses and actually build and create the programs, product, service, and goods, those are actually coaches, right? So when I'm asking all these questions with people, I'm starting to identify what do they really want out of life and how they go about making decisions. If you find a way to make them feel comfortable telling you what you're looking for, then they'll go about saying, okay, here's how I make decisions. And then I start plugging in some holes and providing a different level of value to them on teaching them how to make better decisions long-term and short-term. And then now I know exactly what I need to do with them. And 
if you, as a salesperson or as a coach or as a entrepreneur, if I don't have your best interests at heart, Melanie, then I'm doing things, I'm not living, it's my moral code. It's my moral obligation to point you in the right direction, even if it doesn't align with the product, service, and good or whatever, I, what I have to offer. And I know that you do that as well. And that's something that I heard in some of your content. If you don't believe it's a good fit, then you cut them loose. And you're not cutting them loose to just saying, all right, bye, fish. You're going, you should go check out this X, Y, Z, and you give them something to do. And then when you come back to me, then you're ready. So, but it's all about just, you know, you being aligned on who you are and what you're trying to, you know, accomplish in life and how you really want to be perceived. A lot of people, they put on these masks and trying to be somebody they're not. You know, that's why being 100% authentic is really selling right now in today's world because people just want to feel that you're real. But that's why podcasting is so important. People can feel that you're real by the value that you're providing on your show. I totally agree. And, you know, it's funny. I've like had all these little visuals coming up as you're talking. And, and I was, uh, you know, I was thinking about this word authentic and it is very much what people are looking for. But, and, and I think you would say this, <clears throat> you didn't say this just now, but I think this would be your message is that you don't want to actually run around telling people you're authentic. Because yeah. that implies that you haven't <laughs> been or weren't, right? <laughs> and exactly what Chris just said, I want you to really lean into that in this moment is that when you are having curiosity, because people always ask me, like, how do you how do you host? Like, what's the mindset you get in when you're hosting your show? And by the way, this has been a learned skill. This has not been something I was good at from the get-go. I was kind of nervous and anxious at times in my mm -hmm. podcasting journey, and, and I would get a little bit in my head. But you know, when you find your stride and you get in your confidence, being curious is your superpower on a show yes. and not just like taking the standard questions people I, I want you to ask them, but really getting curious about what is the thing that needs to come out of this conversation. And that is what people feel in that authentic moment. I think that's what people love about Amplify Your Success. I know it's what they love about you, Chris. And um, that's how you bring authenticity. Be yourself. Don't tell everybody you're being authentic. Big right. distinction. Right. And that, and that goes back to the initial question on what you dropped. And that's why I didn't really go at the question with the competitive advantage. When you watch someone, I would say, go through a lot of adversity and that conversation that you're having with that individual, there's going to be a lot of barriers and a lot of like resistance in that conversation. From there, when I'm watching, when I'm putting myself into their world, I'm asking those questions to start identifying their behavioral patterns and seeing how I can make an impact with them. Then I'm going to be able to see them watch them for the first time overcome adversity in themselves or putting themselves on the back foot. I boxed for 21 years. So if you're on the back foot for people that have never boxed before, you're defensive. So when people are defensive, how do I get them in a way of exposing that and then I'm able to see the fight in a real true essence on who they are as an individual, then I can start identifying a competitive advantage for them. And maybe perhaps they haven't figured it out on themselves. That right there is so freaking valuable for them. Information, now they can manifest anything they want out of life because they have already embraced the uncomfortableness and embracing that change that they've been running away from potentially their whole life. Hmm. That's profound. It's, you know, I've been in business 21 years now, which I know I brought up on your show as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a fact you have in brain, in ingrained in your brain now. <laughs> <laughs> but what I realized is there's been many moments where I've had to face those um, fears and mental demons mm -hmm. and to recognize that I'm not alone in them, but to um, embrace them. And to kind of into integrate them into who I am as a leader, as a podcast host, as a, a mentor and guide for expertpreneurs. And I think that's the authenticity that people feel. Again, you don't mm -hmm. have to say it out loud per se, but they start to feel you're being all you. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you leveraging can't it. Do that. Yeah, you can't do that if you're not leaning into those adversity moments. Um, I was talking to a client goodness gracious, this had to have been a year ago or so. It was right at the beginning of COVID, right? And he was forced to go back in alone. I said, listen, I want you to understand something. 
the most powerful and the most beautiful thing to ever watch and and just to be around is someone's soul is on fire. It's like, you know, you can become a dangerous person if you go through these things alone and you come back better. So I want you to focus on that. This is your time. This is your time to shine. Because if you put in a hard work now when no one's watching, you're not going to get exposed in a bright light. You're just not. But you have to put in that work. You, you, just, you can't not just shy away from it. It's going to find you. You know what I mean? You mentioned those demons. I liked what you, you talked about those demons. You need to stare that demon in the face and saying, try me. Try me. Not why me, try me. Because that why me is you're, you're now focusing on the, the victim mentality side. Now you're, if that's deeply ingrained in your subconscious, you're always going to self-sabotage your results at some point. You're not going to blaze through those levels and really getting yourself into the, where you want to be in life and what you're really striving for. But you have to give yourself permission at the beginning of it. Give yourself permission to be great. Don't run away from it. Give yourself permission. You deserve it. Do you not believe that you deserve the life of your dreams? And I, I sometimes when I'm having conversations with people, Melanie, it gets really, I'm like in your face in that, in that moment, but I know how to do it. Insert personality, insert tone with the individual for them to feel safe. I want to let them know I'm here no matter what happens. And I'm okay at dealing with crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you have to be a little crazy to do what we do, right? I'm okay with this because I know my competitive advantage. And I'm, as long as I'm playing this game called infinite business, not finite business, we're going to win because as long as we have the resources available. I'm here to provide the resources for you. Are you willing to learn more? Keep asking questions. And that goes with just even the shows that I'm on. I, I, all I do is ask questions. You mentioned just be a curious individual. I've always been that crazy kid, even when I was way back young, question, questioning everything. Why? <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why? I don't understand. But that really comes with just who I am as an individual. So when I have people like yourself that have 21 years of experience, that needs to be applauded. People don't make it past one. Some. The ones that are you. decent make it past five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like making it past 10, you should get yourself a shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> like celebrate that. That's a big win. Yeah, I think you I'm going to get myself a little award and put it you behind should. my desk. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll get you one. All right? Okay. So, <laughs> it's right. a deal. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for celebrating that with me. Sometimes it's like you're so in it. You're like, wow. Oh, my God. It's 21 yeah, years this year. It. I can't believe I, I passed the 20-year mark even. You know, I'm thinking about everything you're saying and and acknowledging that you've taken all of this extraordinary wisdom and all of these results you've created for big name companies and executives, and now you're channeling it into the podcasting world. And here's what I know about the podcasting world. The community is infinitely resourceful and absolutely generous. And now you're uh, one of those people that we get to tap into in this podcasting community. What have you been seeing happen as you've met more and more of the podcasters? Like, how are you seeing that unfold for yourself? Um, it just, a, uh, I would say job security. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> no, seriously. I'm I mean, in I the right place. I'm with my people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like these people are like, I don't know. They're just open to do anything you ask from them. Um, I did something for, I mentioned it on another show, but um, in season three, I had so much growth in season four now on the win-win effect. And I took some time just to say thank you to many of the guests that came on and invested their time because time is the only non-renewable resource in life. You can never get that back, right? So um, just to say thank you other than a message. I recorded a two-minute testimonial, um, just me talking into a camera, um, non-scripted, because of course I don't do anything scripted because I'm dyslexic. I won't be able to read it in the first place. <laughs> off a screen, but I did it just out of my heart, speaking from my heart, talking about my experience with, you know, that individual and how much it meant to me for them coming on the show and investing their time and sharing their story and some of the insights and shining a light on that. Um, I sent that off and I sent a message with it. Well, my team did, and they sent a message over to them and said, Hey, Chris decided to do this for you. 
and you know he's not going to run any we're not going to run any marketing to it that's yours for at your own disposal the amount of feedback and the replies that we got in so many messages that it, it, it meant the world to me, but it meant the world to them that I've taken a little bit more of my time to shine a light on them and just to show my appreciation where, because anyone, you know, you go on shows, you've been on a lot of shows, they'll buy you something, a t-shirt, or they give you something branded and you can put it in your office. Well, so how do I give them something that it can, it would always have something special on it and they can use anything for? Well, that was something that I did. That's the extra touch that a lot of people aren't going to really think about overall because they're always looking for the return of that favor. Well, I didn't do it as a touch point just to get what I wanted. That's never, that's never my intention. I did that as a way, if they go on another show or they talk about me, then they're going to say that my intention is 100% pure without me telling someone that. So if someone has me on their show or if I'm coming in contact with them directly or indirectly of an event, obviously COVID right now, but if I, they see me, they know that I'm a per- person that will do anything possible to help th- to help elevate them to a higher level. And that's something that you can't put a dollar amount on, in my opinion. I agree. And, you know, what I'm getting to know about you, Chris, is that that's really your competitive advantage, mm-hmm. you know, or at least one of them is the way your heart accesses that generosity and that give energy, that's what makes you stand out. That's what creates this magnetic quality that people want to want to be a part of Chris's world. <laughs> Chris, people are going to want to be a part of Winject because they feel that that energy that you just so naturally emanate. And I think that is something that is kind of lost in the busy hubbub of so many people trying to get to that next level. So a little side note for our community and that you're listening in, part of the reason Chris and I, and this was kind of behind my question, Chris and I met because a common friend of ours, Adam Shibley, who's been on Amphire Success, who rocked, so totally rocked Mm -hmm. uh, his episode. He Instagram messaged me and he's like, oh my gosh, I got to introduce you to my friend, Chris, you guys have to meet there's, you guys are so like perfect to get to know each other and kind of laid the groundwork. And so when a friend like Adam, who is giving, 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 giving all the time in in our podcasting community says, you got to meet somebody, I'm going to listen and I'm going to make the connection. And then Chris very generously invited me to his show. And I'm like, oh yeah, he's got something special, which brought him to my show. And this is what I think people miss out on is this is the power of network. This is the power of community. This is how we expand and amplify easily is by nurturing, being intentionally nurturing and and connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And I think we've forgotten that art, uh, or at least some people have. Yeah. Well, they've gotten lost in the noise. You mentioned Mm -hmm. that. Um, And and I think it's in a couple of your um, episodes, and it might be in all of them. Forgive me, I haven't listened to every single one in eight years. Um, but <laughs> you, you talk <laughs> a lot about that would have been hyping. a feat, Chris. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> you, you mentioned the one word that I, it drives me insane is hype, hypey. Mm. I don't like hype men and hype women. I just because there's nothing behind it. You're just pumping people up for no reason. Then you're touching. You're saying all the right things that everyone else is saying. Oh, trading time for money on, you know, what, what, what do you have to lose at the end of their sale? Oh my God, it drives me insane. Right. So, and that's where they got lost in it because anyone is that anyone can call themselves anything they want to call themselves and no one's going to fact check them, I guess you would say. But I think that's where podcasting is providing such a huge platform and a, and a leverage piece for people to really show who they are. And that's done by nothing but straight value. But that has to come from your heart. Would you agree? Absolutely. It comes from, also, I think it comes from a sense of confidence. Oh, really. Am, so, you know, one of the things we talk a lot about here in my Amplify um, programs is, you know, leveraging your superpowers, really understanding what your unique superpower is. And, and we all have that inside of us. It's just some people are, putting energy into other parts of their, their skills and their strengths. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. You know, Chris, we could talk for hours, hours. I, I, we, we, we might should, even have we to should. do, yeah, <laughs> to say, we might have to do a longer <laughs> version of this someday, but uh, before we have to wrap, I would love to just paint a picture of what you're creating with Winject Studios and the network that you're building. And especially for podcasters and people who are, you know, maybe the right fit for what you're doing there. It's sure. it's such an extraordinary thing you're doing. Yeah. And I appreciate you saying that, especially coming from you and, and the, the amount of, what do you want to call it? Let me use the word clout in the situation. It's popping in my mind for some reason. You carry a lot of weight in the podcasting game, Melanie, you know, in a good way, like a real positive way. So, and you mentioned Adam and, and by the way, Adam, Adam is one of the co-founders of Winject Studios that I reached out to just because we had impactful conversations and networking. I only, the people that I meet and the people that I invite on the win-win effect, I quickly learned and identified pretty quickly, Melody, that you don't just invite everybody on your show right <laughs> from the beginning. I yes. kind of learned the hard way for the first five to like seven-ish. There's like a couple of were great, a couple of were like, oh, why, I, why are they here? But um, it just didn't fit with the message, right? So now, I mean, I think after like maybe that first couple, about five to seven or 10 people that I was inviting on, not saying they're all bad, but they were great. But I learned that, okay, if I needed to only invite people that are aligned to the message 100% and also aligned to my journey, and it's like documenting my journey through my journey, my own journey myself, right? There's a lot of journeys in that. But when you are kind of stepping back and, and, and looking at it that way, when you're networking, I only want to have people that I'm connected to, that I get introduced to. And I think that just speaks volumes on, you know, the way that Adam felt about me and obviously he felt about you and connecting. And that's something that that took him, you know, maybe about 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute. But the, before all that, it came from a thought. And that's something that needs to be celebrated, Right. Um, and it's about the way that you made him feel in your encounters. So, I mean, I know that in, he's the kind of person, that's why he's a founder of one of the founders of Winject Studios and helping me, well, helping all of us build this amazing community and network is because it comes from that intention, that heart, right? You can't, you can't fake that and you can't buy that at Walmart, right? So um, I don't know who, I don't know what store you go to, <laughs> but the Winjex community and the Winjex studios, we, we're always going to be forever a free option for podcasters to come on board, the network and coming on board the community first. So that way they're able to get a nice feel on what they really need. Of course, there's different tiers and products and coaching and programs that we can help build and really refining their show, rebranding. There's a lot of different multifaceted. There's so many different levels to it. But there always will be a free option. And that's what I really want to communicate to your many listeners. That if you're a podcaster and you just want help and you already maybe you're having some success, give us a try. I promise you it'll be time well invested because that's all it's going to take is a little bit of time for you and you'll see the return. Hmm, I love it. So how would somebody find out about Winject Studios? Sure. Um, the winject.com, W-I-N-J-E-C-T.com. Um, I'll share this. I'll have, I have a special little giveaway for, I'm going to have my team send it over to you for the ones that um, having your name in the back end of it. So that way we can start tracking and making sure that also on top of that, we're giving them something special if they do decide to join a free option in a community. So um, I'll make sure that my team provides that information for you as well. Well, that's very motivating. And I will make sure that that's all linked up on the show notes when the episode airs. Uh, it's a really special experience that you're creating. It's a special opportunity for people. I think, you know, being part of a podcasting network and the community that comes from that, it, it's like priceless. Like there is mm -hmm. absolutely zero price you can put on the, the value <laughs> that comes out of it. And I, I just say like, I came into wave two of being a podcaster. So the first four years I was doing a video podcast before video streaming and all that was really accessible and, you know, was working well. And so I was a little ahead of my time there. And so as I went into my second uh, reiteration and I rebranded my podcast and did audio, I have to say something shifted. Like I dropped into a whole nother level of passion and fire and excitement about what I was doing. And wow, the podcasting 
friends that I developed have just been extraordinary. So I'm a huge fan. I'm looking forward to being a part of what you're doing. Yeah. Can I say something at that point? And and this actually, I wouldn't have caught that unless you shared that little piece. Because I know that, you know, obviously jumped on here and it's just audio, right? And I do Mm -hmm. love that because that forces your mind to go to a deeper level. Um, Why I feel this way. I've trained a lot of sales teams over the years. And the first thing that I did for them when they got, so the first couple conversations, of course, people want to see that you're real and using video, but in a sales process, you can't get to the, the true essence of them and the nucleus of them, unless you're putting yourself in a situation where their mind's not going to go nuts of looking at video and you, you don't realize how much you're transmitting communication just by your video being on with you being on the show and you just having no video that that actually takes your mind and puts you in a, in a different situation where you're able to drive the conversation where you really want to drive it. And you're also listening for the intention behind the answers of the guest. And I just want to shine a light on that for all your audience and your, your listeners that they should really be ex- more excited about listening to your episodes because that just shows exactly who you are. So I, I love that about you. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, and the other thing that was my intention behind it too, is I, I, at, at this moment, I believe that audio is more accessible. It yes. allows you to be doing different things, which isn't always ideal, but yeah. you can listen to it while you're driving. You can listen to it while you're walking. You can listen to it while you're at the gym and that's not as easy with the video show. So that honestly mm-hmm. was my biggest um, motivator in shifting gears, but I love what you said about that. Um, so Chris, you probably know this is coming. I love asking a little bit more personal questions. Uh, <laughs> but I was going to get out the gate. Ah, uh, no, nope, <laughs> you're not letting it happen. We got to get one in. Oh, yeah, I good. would love to know, especially with the range of things you've done that are so mm-hmm. big and bold, what would you say is the boldest thing you did up to now to get where you are today? Hmm. Wow. Okay. The boldest thing that I've done up until now is putting myself in a situation where I had to be a little bit more alone in my own thoughts mm. and put, and that's a, could be a potentially a scary place for people. And think about that just for a second. I'm not talking about meditating. And, and if that works for you, con- congratulations. I just meant by like, cause we're in a virtual world and we're in a situation right now where you turn on a TV and it's like, fear, you know, and all this other stuff happening, scarcity tactics, and there's marketing and making money in this, but are you truly alone in your own thoughts for you to be able to understand what's happening with you? Not, and the reason why I'm saying that's the boldest decision that I made that forced me to really dig in, like dig all the way in. And I'm telling you that I don't bring my phone in my room at all. Like when I'm in my office and I work from home now, but if I'm in my office, all my technology, other than the TV in my living room, stays in my office. When I'm shutting off, I'm shutting off. When I go to my bedroom, it's like when I go to my bedroom, I, first thing I wake up is mind, body, spirit. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, people do meditate and people do whatever they need to do. But I really force me to give myself permission to focus on me for the first part of the day. Wow, you are the most important powerful. person. You're the most important person. And we tend to forget that because we're distracted. And I've, I've, I've suffered from this, uh, that FOMO stuff, right? <laughs> Fear of missing out. <laughs> I, was I did a whole episode my... on that. <laughs> did you? Oh, man. Yes. Oh, well, I gotta go. Send it to me. I have, to, I have okay. to find it somewhere. I love that stuff. That was me, man. I was in my twenties. I just, I, I was a guy that stayed up all the, the whole night just because people are there and hanging out. I just had a fear of missing out. Like, and I feel the same way when my phone, especially when you're building companies, corporations, you're making impact with people, and they always want to share their thoughts. And of course, you get your motivation from that. I was like, I got to shut this down. So when I started doing that, like, it, I'm not even talking about the working out stuff afterwards. The, the amount of clarity that I have nowadays, that's given me the, given me the, I guess you would say the, the power behind all of it to really be conscious of where and how I invest my time. 
and I'm not if I'm doing it for somebody else overall. Yeah, of course we're givers, right? We're gonna, we're gonna give, give, give value. But is it really is it serving me though? I can't give even in my family. I can't give my family what's left of me after I serve all day long. I need to give them what's best of me as well. Like I, and I read a quote, it's Mark Sacasa Rubio. I know that we're aligned with him as well, um, but he came on, he's been on the hustle and flip guys from there, Matt Wolf and Joe fear. Um, he's Joe is actually one of the first ones that um, told me like, you need your own show. <laughs> he was big on that. Um, but Mark's, he told me, he mentioned something that really stuck with me. It's like, in order for you to eat your own dog food, you can't, you shouldn't know the difference between work and play anymore. It's just what you do. And I took that from that conversation. And Mark's, if you're listening to this, buddy, I love you. Because that was, that was, he didn't even give me that advice for me to take it and do something with. That was the major catalyst for me to really shut off and give myself enough time for me to be me and be great. So that was a long way to answer, answer, but I wanted to answer it off the cuff and not really be, I'm a non-scripted individual anyway, but that I think that's the boldest thing I've ever done for myself. And that is not what I thought you would say, but it's such an extraordinary example of a bold move of being willing to shut off the noise so you can get clear about who you are. So thank you for sharing it with us, Chris. Oh, uh, as you're listening in today, I would love to hear what your great takeaway is from today and the episode. You can share it on the show page. You can uh, put it into the uh, reviews for Apple or wherever you listen to your podcast. You can join us in Amplify Your Authority. And uh, if you are a podcaster and you're looking to take your podcast to the next level, I highly recommend uh, checking out what Chris and Adam and Justin are doing with Winject Studios. We'll make sure we link all that up. And as Chris mentioned, there will be a little special something uh, if you come off of the Amplify show and uh, mm-hmm. go apply for their program. Or I guess it's not a program, your, your network. Yeah, just a community. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah, there'll be definitely a little bit extra stuff that we'll sprinkle in there to make, you know, to show the, your appreciation for you tuning into this episode. But I do appreciate you, Melanie, and everything you're about. Um, I've just been a, you know, a blessing to be on your show. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks for investing the time to be with us today. All right. We'll be back next week. We will see you then. Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com. And I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. Plus, we're going to keep this conversation going, and I want to hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Leave your full name, and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media. 